Welcome back to King's Podcast, The Wellness Diet with Lucky. I'm your host, Esther Lucky. Today we are joined by Dr. Anila Daba, consultant neurosurgeon, and she'll be taking us on a deep dive into brain tumors. I know that's not a common topic, but I'm sure it's one you'd want to hear about. Let's get to it. Dr. Anila, thank you so much for joining us here. Thank you very much for inviting me. So let me ask you, how many uh, years of experience do you have in neurosurgery? Uh, about 15 years now. And you're here in the UAE and the UK? No, I am actually uh, American trained and did my training over there, did some fellowship. I was a professor at one of the universities and uh, then decided to come to UAE. Professor? Wow. Uh, what actually are brain tumors? And when I say brain tumors, are brain tumors uh, brain cancer or how, uh, how do those two differ? Brain tumors are defined into two categories. Uh, there are some of the brain tumors that are cancers, which means that patients who have them have a very short survival, life survival. But then there are brain tumors, which are the majority are actually just lesions or masses Mm -hmm. and if you remove them then it's a complete cure so not all brain tumor is a death sentence actually there are only few brain tumors which like cancer Mm -hmm. it doesn't spread to the body but it spreads throughout the brain and those are the ones that are devastating Mm -hmm. and for the family and for the patient as well um are there different types of brain tumors there are many, many, many types. And okay. there are T- tell us multiple the... <laughs> subtypes. <laughs> Just tell us the three common types of brain tumors. So the three most common type of brain tumors is one called as a meningioma, which is very common. Second is a glio- glioma, and glioma again has many subtypes. I'm okay. not even going to attempt and... <laughs> pronouncing those. <laughs> and then for children, I'll give one for children. It's called a medioblastoma, and it's also a common one. Uh-huh. So two for adults, one for children. You've just mentioned children. So do brain tumors have an age limit or an age where they commonly occur? Actually, brain tumor, if there are children, sometimes they are born with brain tumors. So there is no age limit. Different kind of tumors occur at different ages. So there are children that are born with brain tumors, some that develop in the first year, some in the first five years, some in the first 10 years. Uh-huh. So different kind of tumors at different age ranges. All right, including adults, middle age, yeah, older adults, adults. middle age, mm-hmm. older, even beyond 50, mm-hmm. beyond mm-hmm. 60, yeah. You know, you say there's some brain tumors are congenital. Mm-hmm. So what could actually be the cause of brain tumors? So it, we don't know. Something happened in the womb of the mother, some genetic changes. Like, you know how children are born with Down syndrome, you know, because there's some gene that did not form correctly and then the child develops Down syndrome. It's it's similar, like children who are born with brain tumors are the ones that some genetic abnormality happened and then when they are born, they have a a brain tumor. And what about in adults? What can lead one to develop a brain tumor? So sometimes there is a reason, like there are certain syndromes. We know there is a genetic predisposition that if you have, for example, a chromosome number three, which is bad, then you will develop this kind of a tumor. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a chromosome number 10, that's bad, then you will have this kind of tumor. Mm -hmm. So yes, again, most of the tumors have a genetic predisposition. What are some of the telltale signs that somebody might have a brain tumor and what should they be looking out for before they come see you? So sometimes the symptoms are so mild that you would feel that they are like your daily symptoms, like for example, some mild headaches in your temple, some mild dizziness and you would just think that you know it's nothing for one reason or another you accidentally get a ct scan and you would develop that you have a brain tumor so sometimes Uh the symptoms are extremely mild uh, and sometimes the symptoms are not so mild at all they are like overt for example somebody who develops first time seizures and then they have a full grand mal seizure and then they discover that they have a brain tumor or they suddenly they develop stroke like half side of their body becomes weak and then they find out that they have a brain tumor so again very wide range mm-hmm. uh, some people cannot speak uh, there are some brain tumors like for example i ha- i remember two of my patients 
very interesting stories. One had a brain tumor uh, in the back part of the head where our vision is. So she would see old classic movies mm -hmm. running in front of her eyes, oh. which was actually a type of a seizure. Oh. Yes. So, for example, she would one day come and say, I saw Casablanca today. And I'm like, <laughs> and okay. she was actually not was watching seizure. it. She was, I mean, not the whole movie, but <laughs> snippets of it, right? Uh -huh. But that was a seizure for her. Wow. Uh, then I remember there was one lady who had a temporal lobe, which is an area of the brain seizures. And she would smell dry chilies or burnt papers. Yeah. It differs. <laughs> yeah, it differs so much. So, I mean, uh, somebody like me, let's say I have a headache. I just pop ibuprofen and then um, two hours later I'm good to go. So what can make somebody come see you? What should they uh, experience in order for them to come see you? In case your headaches are becoming recurrent, which means that, you know, you are just taking too many ibuprofen, which is not normal for you, then you should definitely seek a neurology or a neurosurgery consultation. Mm -hmm. Or if you feel that your headaches are coming in the morning, the morning headaches are actually a telltale sign of you have some sort of a raised brain pressure. Mm -hmm. So... Um, uh, make sure that you reach to your neurologist or if you feel that you are having some blurry vision or some nausea with your headaches. And again, if you, it happens once or twice, it's fine. But if you think that the pattern it's ongoing. is just not uh -huh. going away, then I think it's best to seek someone help. Yeah, but then, um, sorry to deviate. We spoke about this with uh, Dr. John before. So we have uh, headaches and we have uh, migraines. Right. And then now we have brain tumors. <laughs> Add it to the How do we Add differentiate the all this? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, uh, people who see migraines and atypical migraines or just generalized headaches very frequently, they can usually sort of tease out whether this is a migraine or is it atypical headache of some sort? Is it mm -hmm. a stress or a tension headache? Or is it a migraine as a cluster headache? Or mm -hmm. this is a headache that's somehow not fitting the picture. So I think it's a lot of experience that teaches you that how can you tease out one headache from the other and decide that it's time to get a CT scan or MRI. It is, it is very, very difficult for most folk like me. Yeah. You know, getting a headache, let's say this week. Okay, next week, yeah, I have another headache. Should I go see Dr. Anila? Uh, nah, it's just a headache. You know. <laughs> no, yeah. I think I think you should uh, probably for simple headaches, neurologist should be the mm -hmm. the first person to reach mm -hmm. out to, mm -hmm. and uh, they are the people who usually see the headaches more. So, and if they feel that you know this is something that should be referred out to neurosurgeon, then they they usually do. And we have a great neurosciences center here. We have we have yeah. absolute great team of neurologists yeah. that I work with, and uh, they are extremely skillful team worker, yeah. and uh, we all get along very well. So uh, what are the common risk factors for brain tumors? So again, if, for example, if somebody is suffering from breast cancer or prostate cancer or something like that, right, then usually the, the brain tumors are the ones that are coming from somewhere else. For example, you have a lung cancer, then you could have a brain tumor which is coming from the lung, or if you have a breast cancer, then the brain tumor could be coming from the breast, right? Mm -hmm. So in those conditions, usually the oncologists are very vigilant that if people who have breast cancer or lung cancer, then if they develop some kind of headache, they usually get the scans done very quickly mm -hmm. because they can be, uh, we call it metastases, which means that it is spreading out in the body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So th those are the, you know, the common things that uh, we, we do surveillance for, right? Now, then remember I talked about there are some genetic tendencies. Yeah, yeah. So if your family has those kind of genetic tendencies for something like if you have neurofibroma or neurofibromatosis, those are things that do develop the, the brain tumors. So neurologists or pediatricians who are taking care of uh, the families, they usually take uh, a surveillance scan much earlier than mm -hmm. um, any one of us would do. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, so if you have any kind of a syndromic problem, then it becomes a risk factor. Or if you have any kind of a cancer going on in some other parts of the body, mm -hmm. then you can. But if your question is that if there's any food or, or there's an environment <laughs> mm -hmm. or Something you know, like that, if there's yeah. anything I'm doing that causing me brain tumors, then no. no. We have not so far figured that out mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've been a neurosurgeon for more than 15 years in the U.S., in the U.A., how common do you come across brain tumors? I would say they are not as common as cancers are, but they are common. Mm -hmm. As a neurosurgeon, you would encounter, um, I would say, at least one or two brain tumors per week in, in, oh. your, in your clinics. That's very common. Yeah, yeah. So, and there could be different types. But again, um, usually by the time somebody reaches a neurosurgeon, he has already gone through a family medicine doctor or some neurologist. So it's mm -hmm, only mm -hmm. a referred base, right? So if, if, if you ask me how common the brain tumor is to reach a family medicine doctor or neurologist, then I would say it would be rare, right? Because mm -hmm. out of a whole bunch, they will find one neuro. neuro. But since neurosurgery is a very referred system, so we see it more commonly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So tell me... Um, from the moment a patient is referred to you, the patient has come from family med, a neurologist, up to the neurosurgeon. From the moment they walk through your door and you diagnose them, how is the treatment journey? So again, there are brain tumors that the size may be so small and um, somebody maybe who was 70 years old, have a very little, tiny little brain tumor, I would just say, don't do anything that looks like a benign tumor. Maybe we will just observe you, get MRIs every year, surveillance, and uh, you know, you don't have to operate on them at all. Then there are brain tumors, for example, somebody's young and has a very large tumor, which is compressing on the brain, then you have to be very urgently removed to remove the pressure on the brain, pressure on the eyes or any functional areas of the brain. So this is the two extremes. Then there's any, anything in between. Sometimes mm -hmm. there are brain tumors for you require some very extensive testing. So you won't jump into doing surgery. You would go ahead, you would do all the blood work that's needed. Uh, you may need hormonal test. You may need CT of the chest, abdomen, pelvis. So you have to, yeah. you may have to get a bunch of tests, mm -hmm. and then after you get all your results, then you decide, you know, which is the right time to do the surgery. You know, October was Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so we've been talking so much about uh, radiation, uh, mm -hmm. chemotherapy, and all that. Mm -hmm. Does the same apply? For brain tumors yes it does mm -hmm. so uh, some brain tumors you remove uh, and it's complete cure you do not require radiation and chemotherapy but then there are brain tumors okay especially the ones which we call gliomas mm -hmm. which comes into one to four varieties those are the ones that they require radiation and chemotherapy post-surgical resection yeah. i might know the answer to my next question but i have to ask it anyway mm -hmm. so can brain tumors be prevented <laughs> the day we know why they happen, that's the day we will find, we'll make a vaccine to prevent it. Up mm -hmm. till now, the biggest problem is that we do not even know why do that happen. Oh. So we have no way to prevent it. You know, that is so interesting because since we started this podcast, I'd say 99% of the specialists I've spoken to, uh, obesity was blamed for most common diseases. So when it comes to brain tumors, obesity is innocent? I don't have a correlation with obesity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So brain tumors yeah. just... Can happen in the thinnest of people or the fattest of people. The fattest of people, of people. Yeah. and the tiniest yeah. and the oldest. And the tiniest, like a day, bo a day old baby to 60, 70 year old person, right? So huge range, different kind of tumors. I mean, I am, you know why I love my work? <laughs> Because every day there's a new variety. Every day there is a little challenge. Every day I have to think how I'm going to do this, what's the age, you know, um, how I'm going to remove it. I think through, I have to do <laughs> tests. So every day becomes, it's not, I love neurosurgery because it's not monotonous. There is such so much variety to it and there's so much to think through process that it becomes like, you know, if anybody has seen House MD that, you know, you have to like, you know, figure it out, a certain disease process, <laughs> and how do you reach to it. So yeah. it feels like that kind of 
house MD type situation, you know. So I feel every brain tumor is different. <laughs> um, every human being deals with the brain tumor differently. Okay, so it's not just the technical aspect of removing the tumor, but it's also emotional aspect of how to support your patients, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. immediately after surgery, but throughout their lives if they need it to be. All right, doctor, we know you have a very busy clinic, so I'm just going to let you go. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Brain tumors. That headache might just be a headache. It might be a migraine or it can be a brain tumor. Please make sure you see your family medicine doctor, neurologist, before you reach Dr. Anila Daba. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy.